Hey guys, this is Karel Bashan from Barrel Hand Timepieces. I wanted to give you guys a quick tour of the final piece for Project 1. So we'll start with the case itself. It's CNC machined and hand finished here in the US. It's made out of a lightweight grade 5 titanium, which is really hard to polish. And these guys did an amazing job with these polished edges. On the back, you'll see we have a black DLC treatment. DLC stands for a diamond-like coating. It basically further hardens the surface of the titanium and it makes it a lot more resistant to scratches and impact. Above the logo, you'll see we have the crown release system. Um, it's fully 3D printed in steel and the technology we're using is called binder jetting. So binder jetting works by, it starts out with a steel powder and then we print it out layer by layer. So if you look close, you'll see there's all these little print lines. Each print line represents one layer, and the current technology we're using, we're getting down to 25 microns per layer, which is really thin. Um, to give you an idea, that would be the equivalent of taking a strand of hair, filleting it four times, and that would be the thickness that we're printing at. So really precise parts, and it allows us to make mechanical systems not only on the outside of the watch, but even some features on the inside that we'll get into later. The other thing that's cool with 3D printing is you get these really unique textures that you don't get with other manufacturing methods. So you see all the print lines. It kind of shows off the topographical map of the part. So here you see all these curvatures. It's really cool. And on the inside too, you'll see it's going to be hard, but there's the model number engraved there. So this one says zero zero because it's a prototype, but it's really cool because you could only really achieve this with additive manufacturing. If you think about trying to do this with a CNC machine or a laser engraver, you don't have any way of accessing this, this section because it's covered by the hood here. So it's something that is only achievable with this new additive manufacturing technology. So that was just to kind of show off things you can do with 3D printing that would be very difficult to do otherwise. Uh, the rear lugs are also 3D printed steel and they have this cool lattice structure built into them and I'll talk about why we do that later on too. So let's go ahead and wind up the watch. Right now it's in manual winding mode it's got 50 hours of power reserve and this little crown release switch when I flick it it disengages the crown and allows you to set the time so we'll go ahead and put it into time setting mode on the front you'll see the rear lugs flowing through the case and into this top plate area and then in between the rear lugs there's this cool titanium exhaust tip that we even heat treated it's just adding to this whole spaceship for your wrist theme. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen like a rocket ship exhaust or some supercar exhaust systems where the, the tip will be heat treated and you get this really cool color gradation as it goes from yellows and oranges all the way to blues and purples. And it contrasts really nicely with this burnt orange uh, crown as well. So the crown is loosely modeled off a Mars rover wheel. And you can see it's got a lot of depth and dimensionality to it as well. So let's go ahead and play with the watch. So by setting the time, you got a couple things going on. You have the jump hour at the top and a linear minute system at the bottom. So right now it's reading 310. And you're probably wondering why is it 310 and not 350? So the way that you can distinguish between the two is you have this color wheel indicator at the bottom and it highlights which side to read. So right now it's highlighting white so you know to read the left side. We'll go ahead and run through the movement a little bit more. So that's 320 and then as it flips now it's 340 and you'll see the color wheel indicator now is highlighting orange so you know to read the right side instead. And as we run through the top, you see it switched to 4 o'clock, now 5 o'clock. So as it's jumping, it's using this uh, Geneva gear mechanism. 
And the reason we went with that over a traditional jump hour mechanism is traditional jump hours use a lot more components, usually 15 or more pieces, and you can't really set the time backwards on them. So with this system, it's a lot more robust and reliable. It's only using two parts and we can run it forward or backwards. Um, if you look at the whole dial too, while I'm setting the time, the whole dial is rotating and that piece is called the cam plate. It's got this, you'll see, it's got a little cam path engraved into it and that's what's guiding the minutes up and down. So the linear minute has a little guide on some guide rails underneath and there's a pin underneath it and that pin is tracing the cam path. So as the dial rotates, it's gliding the pin up and down on these guide rails. Uh, it's very similar to if you think about a record player and you have the needle that's sticking into the groove. Um, as the record rotates, the needle is following that groove during its rotation. And then if you look, oh, so these, these colored inserts that you see for the color wheel indicator, those actually aren't painted there's a friend of mine down in L LA and he makes luminous composites. And what's really cool about that is you take blocks of loom and you CNC machine them out. And so it's a lot thicker and brighter and longer lasting than traditional super luminova. So by putting blocks of loom into it, it just retains light for a lot longer. And at night it just looks amazing. I mean, you get, the whole outer dial is a luminous composite, and so it just gives this cool backlit soft glow to the whole piece. And then you have the the minutes are also super luminova, the hour as well. And if you look close too, you'll see there's these little ruby bearings. So there's two down here, and then there's even some. It's gonna be tough to see this. There's some underneath this top plate on both sides. So you have four of these, and what they're doing is it's part of a cam plate leveling system. So what it does is it allows the dial to rotate freely, but if ever you were to drop or bump your watch into a wall or something, it protects it during impact. So it keeps the cam plate level and protects it from any shocks. And then on the outside of the dial, we have these chapter rings. And these are also 3D printed in steel. So in total, we have 11 parts, I believe, 3D printed in steel. There's these two, there's these two rear lugs, the whole crown release system. And then you have this top plate as well. So if you look at the, the chapter ring, there's this lattice structure built into it. And I was talking earlier about why we integrate lattice structures. So there's two reasons. One is to show off the capabilities of 3D printing. Making parts like that would be really hard to machine with traditional methods. You have some very sharp angles and complex geometries that make it so that it would be difficult to do through traditional methods, but very simple with additive manufacturing. The other reason we use it is this lattice structure helps line up the parts and that's actually really useful during the printing process because when we're printing these parts, you're adding steel powder layer by layer. So by the time you get to the, the top layers, the steel powder above is compressing the layers below. So if you have too much weight, you can actually warp the part. So by adding these uh, structures into them, it's creating more dimensionally accurate parts when they come out of the printer. That way they're ready to go and we can throw them into the watch with uh, very high precision. And you'll see the top plate has the same deal too. It's got this honeycomb lattice structure built into it. And this lattice structure has the same kind of ability where it's preventing the part from compressing or warping during the printing process. And one thing I really like about 
uh, something we've carried out throughout the whole piece is it's a combination of traditional watchmaking with a state-of-the-art additive manufacturing so you know there's pieces where it's it's almost like this rough raw 3d printed part and it's contrasted with really high-end hand-finished pieces uh, and then the top plate really highlights that where you have just the the raw surface finish of the 3d print and then it's framed by this beautiful polished edge and they did an amazing job with this the front curve especially if you look at it up close you can you can see yourself in the reflection and you can see everything in the room behind you so it's like this cool domed mirror effect So the watch is limited to 20 pieces. It's available for reservation on barrelhand.com. And if ever you guys have any questions about the project, feel free to leave a comment 